Thank you very much for staying on the program. Welcome back. My cabinet has given the nod to the Ministry of Energy to move all public institutions from the national grid to solar power sources. The move is aimed at reducing the debt burden of the electricity company of Ghana and government. Addressing the fourth Ghana Renewable Energy Fair in Accra, Vice President Dr. Mahamudu Baumia noted that feasibility studies have begun with some of the agencies involved to begin installation work soon. Let's get back to Ebenezer Sabute Aman, who has been attending uh, the fair, uh, to tell us more about what exactly the Vice President has been saying. Good afternoon, Eben. Welcome to the marketplace. Hello, Eben. Hi, Abwaji. All right, so what exactly has the Vice President been saying, and how did he explain that? So the vice president thinks, I mean, it is about time government moves all state institutions onto solar power generation. According to him, the situation where we rely on hydro is causing the ECG because sometimes the cost comes so huge that even the government is not able to pay the electricity supplier. Therefore, it is about time we move all state institutions onto solar generation such that they will be providing their own power and they will be paying for whatever cost it might come with it. In this case, ECG doesn't have the mandate to give power to the state institutions. He mentioned the fact that there has been a visibility study which is already which is ongoing at the Flagstaff House and some institutions like Parliament. And when it is done, the rollout will begin hopefully by the middle of or by the end of the year. Now, Evan, I want this clarification. Is, it, is there going to be a central, another central you know, power supply aside from the ECG when this move is uh, actually um, conducted? Hello, can you please speak up a bit? So, Abinisa, I, I would want to find out if they are moved off the national grid, are they going to be under another central you know, authority apart from the ECG? Not at all. These institutions will be operating their own power I mean, uh, um, generation. They'll be doing, using their own power generation because if you could recall, there was a time when the state institutions were owing the government, I mean, the ECG so much such that it became a challenge for the ECG to supply power to households. When this happened, uh, I mean, you are going to pro provide your own power. Therefore, you are not going to rely on the ECG. There's not going to be any cost to the ECG. But before we end the show, I have here a company that manufactures this solar, I mean, panels, these PVCs in their country. And I would like to engage them to take their thoughts on the uh, announcement so far. I have here engineer Maximilian who will give us more brief about that. Uh, tell us briefly, a company that is producing PVC in Ghana, do we have the capacity to provide all these state institutions? Thank you very much. So, um, uh, thank you for having me. Um, my company is Strategic Power Solutions, and Strategic Power Solutions is actually the only solar PV manufacturing company within the West African sub-region that is producing solar panels right here in Ghana. At the moment, we have a production capacity of 32 megawatt, and we are scaling up actually to a capacity of 165 megawatt. When you look at the quarterly demand on the market for solar PV, the quarterly demand for Ghana is around 4 megawatt. So it even has an annual of about 16. So even our current production capacity is even twice the demand on the Ghanaian market. And so even scaling up to 165 megawatt, my brother, you understand that we are more than capable of doing Would it have any effect on the cost of power at all? Precisely. Solar has reached great parity. Great parity essentially means the cost of solar is at par with the cost of grid. And even when you do a proper discount cash flow analysis, you realize that solar is even cheaper. Investing in solar is even cheaper. There is no escalation cost. There is no... Um, um, all these recurring costs with solar, except that you only have to do a replacement. But experts tell us that, I uh, mean, installation from the beginning is very expensive. How do you defend that too? I, I, I say that that's a cliche. I say it's a cliche because it used to be expensive. I mean, seven, ten years down the lane, solar, I mean, because R&D was not so much done into the solar PV models. But now, solar is very competitive. I mean, you have places where you are getting the energy sale of solar being around 5 cents per kilowatt hour. 
I mean, even in Ghana, we are doing between 8 and 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So that in itself tells you that solar is very, 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 very competitive and affordable. And, and solar is the way forward. So you think it's sustainable? We can do it? When you look at the triple bottom line of sustainability, I mean, nobody would tell you solar is sustainable. Economically, solar, solar is, is viable. Socially, solar is viable. And environmentally, I mean, what clean energy can you have other than solar? And so to look at solar being sustainable, solar qualifies for all the triple bottom line of sustainability. All right, thank you very much, Engineer Maximilian. So you had Engineer Maximilian who's been explaining to us the cost, I mean, the, 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 whatever will happen whenever we are able to go into the solar generation and also telling us that his company is capable of providing the, 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 the solar generation uh, equipment. Yima. All right, many thanks uh, for that update. Ebenezer Sabote reaching us live with the updates so far on the decision by cabinet to actually take off or remove all public institutions off the national grid to remove the curtail the burden on cost of power supply. We're trying to get some thoughts of energy expert uh, Kojo uh, Poku on this particular development when we get him put him on the line. But before then, South Korea will soon set up an automobile and onion processing factories as part of government's, uh, government's one district, one factory initiative. The move, according to Deputy Trade Minister Robert Ahom Kalinsi, will create employment opportunities for the unemployed youth in the country. He was speaking at a dinner in Accra to welcome a Korean business delegation to the country. Government's One District, One Factory initiative is still seen as unique in the eyes of some international investors, even though the program has been criticized for the slow pace of implementation. Recently, car manufacturing company Volkswagen declared its intention to establish an assembling plant in the country. Subsequently, the Minister of Trade announced at a program that another international car maker, Nissan, also wants to come to Ghana. The latest to come on board are Korean investors. At a dinner to welcome the Korean partners, Deputy Trade Minister Robert Ahm Kalinsi urged Ghanaians to take advantage of the opportunities this will offer. The strategy of our President's Excellency Nana Kufuado and this government is about the industrial transformation of our country. And we want to have industrial transformation because of the importance of what that does for the kind of jobs and opportunities for young people. So Ghana is very keen. This morning I had a, a big forum with the Minister of Finance where we were talking to our German counterparts about the automobile and other industries. And it is these kind of industries that would help bring the technology, the know-how and opportunities for both Ghanaian and international businesses. Spokesperson of the Korean Partners, KS Construction and Associates, Lee Don, expressed his gratitude to the government for the warm reception and pleasures outfits will work to boost Ghana's economy. Very nice, okay. And the minister say, you know, the, it's very young, uh, young generation people is coming to coming out. And then from Korea, we have the, some part skill handover. We have some in the invest money, and then we are together to Ghana and the Korean people together, long journey to life together. That's in the Percy Dennis Kweku, CEO of Feb2223 Consult, the company that brokered the deal, noted this is the first of many such deals to come. My involvement with my partners from Korea is just a just call to actually, you know, integrate them into our system and take up opportunity of it and make sure that our people benefit. That is all. Two international building materials manufacturing firms from Turkey and Australia have begun moves to establish assembling plants in Ghana to target the West African market. Executive Chairman of Image Consortium Group, Eric Ben Huajato, disclosed this to Joy Business after opening the 16th building construction and property exhibition in Accra. Ebenezer Sabuti has more. The building and construction industry is getting some attention from foreign investors due to the growing housing deficit, which in itself offers more business opportunities. After hosting the International Building Construction and Property Exhibition, some companies have expressed interest in establishing in the country to be able to have access to the West African market. Executive Chairman of Image Consortium, organizers of the event, explains further to Joy Business. They have actually opened shop here. You know, and the next step of it is to now do some of the production here. For example, the lights and things, they might bring in the components, but to assemble them here. 
because they say Nigeria might be the destination, but Ghana is the gateway. You know, so um, the same thing for true. They do CCTV, closed circuit alarms and all. They've got the components. So they said, look, why not bring it in here and create an assembly line and then have it assembled here? Do they have Ghana. the market? Oh, the market certainly is there. The mar look, the way many people are becoming so security co conscious, every compound or so either has some form of barbed wiring, some form of uh, CCC TVs and a whole, all manner of alarms, window alarms, door alarms, panic button alarms. I mean, it is, it's, the market is there. Deputy Minister for Works and Housing, Eugene Boatier Entry, commended the organizers for the exhibition and asked for more local participation. Well, the question is, uh, most of the stuff here that we see being manufactured in our country, that's, that's the number one question. If not, then I think as a country we are failing because there is no economic boost to what we've seen here. And you know, the government must create an, an enabling environment where these people that you see here will come here with their know-how and money and set up. For example, you know, making the free zone, free zones area available to potential uh, manufacturers and investors. These are all areas where I think we should be pushing. And strong people like you in the media should take it upon yourself. You are very strong. You are holding it, and this thing you are strong. Uh, strong people like you should be holding. Um, important events to attract people who have money and know how to come into our country to help. This year's event is under the theme Smart Secured Construction. Now, eight finalists of the two previous editions of the Cosmos Architect Challenge have been given a boost in their businesses. They now have a chance to showcase their products and services at the 2018 pre harvest Conference held in Tamale in the northern region. Karen Dodu was there and has come through with this report. The Pre-Harvest Conference is an annual exhibition which brings together various value chain actors in the agricultural sector. Farmers, financial institutions, dealers in farm equipment and agricultural service providers were among participants at this year's conference. Cosmos Energy Ghana, as one of the sponsors of the annual event, used the opportunity to show six final businesses from the last two episodes of the Agritech Challenge. <laughs> Representatives from Anitrack, Agroinova, Complete Farmer, Trotra Tractor, Galani and Qualitrace were the teams that got the opportunity to meet potential customers and investors at the conference. And Anitrack is helping livestock farmers track and identify their livestock farms both health-wise and location. We are doing this in a bit to help livestock farmers safeguard their animals against undetected diseases as well as uh, cattle theft which is really disturbing them and they lose a lot of money uh, as a result of that. We also want to make it easy for individuals to invest into agriculture. So with the land that we've secured, we are currently growing ginger, cassava and chili pepper and we allow individuals to invest in at least one acre of either the crop of the crops that I've mentioned and what we do is that we manage the farm from you from beginning to the end. Galani is an, a technology company in the agricultural sector that helps different stakeholders in the agricultural value chain gain visibility of farm activities so they are better informed on how to support these farmers. They are already in the agricultural value chain supporting these farmers with various services. They can be seeds, inputs, financial services or any other services, even mechanization. So we come in and help them digitize this supply chain. For Qualitrace, this was a very good opportunity to showcase one of its services with Aquamea, the chemical spraying drone. Now what the Qualimat app does is it links farmers to quality agro imports so that farmers don't have to go into the marketplace where there are a lot of fake products on the market. So that is one thing that we are doing. Then we said, what can we do extra to also help the farmers? What we came up with is with what we call the quality scan. Now, what the quality scan basically does is it helps the smallholder farmer to early and at the right time detect pest and crop attack on his farm so that he doesn't, he doesn't have to 
lose about 50% of its capital. So this is what Qualitrace is doing to help the smallholder farmers in our villages. Winning team of the 2017 edition, Agroinova, was ready to put to good use the contacts and new connections made at the conference. Cosmos Energy has been very, very instrumental in our growth and our scale. And um, Cosmos Energy has empowered us in so many ways um, as, as a winner um, for the 2017 edition of um, the Cosmos Innovation um, Challenge. We are proud to say that our $50,000 has helped us um, to do our beta testing. Um, it's also helped us to do um, our prototyping and, and build our system and also to do um, um, all that we need to do as a startup to be able to scale to the market and that is very huge and so this is very huge for us giving us access to meeting the president and other nationals um, other national president as well and we also have been able to tap into the collaborative energy that cosmos energy brings by bringing in partners um, who are within the value chain um, for the poultry industry and that is huge for us for the 2016 winning team Chor Chor tractor it says it will forever be grateful to cosmos energy for the opportunity given so far we the Toronto Tractor couldn't have made, um, come out, um, has it not been Cosmos um, Innovation Centre because we are the first product of the Cosmos Innovation Challenge and that has basically been what has piled us on. Apart from uh, giving us the seed funding of $50,000 two years ago, now our business has grown. We've had also technical support. Um, we're currently in Ghana, almost every um, region in Ghana we are covering now. We are venturing into new markets in Mali and Zimbabwe this year. It's an attention to women in business now, and the second lady, Samira Baumia, is calling for equal access for women to education, businesses, finance, and land, among others, to help propel them economically and to function efficiently. She was giving a keynote address at the maiden edition of the Global Women's Professional and Business Exchange Conference in Accra. Mrs. Baumia noted that there shouldn't be any situation where women are least, are last, in terms of consideration for resource distribution. The Global Women's Professional and Business Exchange Conference brought together several women in leadership from across the globe to share experiences in business and to network for effective linkages. They include former Deputy Minister of Tourism and Creative Arts, Abla Jifa Gumashi, Chief Business Strategist, Maruna Treba, Head of Business Programming at Multimedia, Emma Morrison, and a host of other participants from across the world. The event was organized by the U.S. Ghana Chamber of Commerce in partnership with Joy Business. President of the Chamber, Florence Thorson Hart, in an address, noted that women will control significant economic power by 2010, hence the need to encourage them to improve. We'll talk about what the current status is for women globally and also take a look at uh, what is working and what remains to be done. The good news is that by the year 2030, women will control this about $75.4 trillion in economic power. 90% of the, the dollar a woman spends goes to improve the lives of her family. Second Lady Samira Baumia called for reforms to ensure women have equal access to economic resources as well as access to ownership and control over land, other forms of property, financial service and natural resources in accordance with national laws. We must also undertake reforms to give women equal rights to economic resources as well as access to ownership and control over land. I spoke about that earlier. And forms of property, financial services, inheritance, and natural resources in accordance with national laws. Special provisions must be made for access to credit and financing for women. That would encourage business development and growth. I'm glad to say that government has allocated some monies for women entrepreneurs so as a way to jumpstart this, to get this thing going in, from the Ministry of Business Development. 
And so for all of you wondering how, go to the minister and tell him that I said there's no money there that you should be able to access. In a breakout session on branding, group head business programming at multimedia Emma Morrison and has caused the need to keep an eye on competition and to get people relate to organizational values and remain loyal to brands. You have to keep an eye on your competition because you have to be different from your competition and give them the experience that they need and they want and they can relate to. So you're keeping your eye really on the competition because everybody else has a, a salon, a spa, you know. At the end of the day, if people can actually relate to the values of your company or you yourself, They'll stick with them. The Ghana U.S. Chamber hopes to make the Global Women's Professional and Business Exchange Conference an annual affair. Thing with women, over 250 of Africa's leading technology innovators are meeting at the second Africa Summit on Women and Girls in Technology. This comes at a crucial time when one in seven women have access to affordable and reliable internet connectivity in the country. Charles Aiti has been speaking with the Executive Director of the Alliance for Affordable Internet, Sonia Hockey, and Senior Policy Manager at the Web Foundation, Nanjira Sambuli, on some best ways of bridging the gender gap when it comes to internet connectivity. In the last, I would say, two to five years, we have seen this issue being understood as a very critical one. So that has been progress in and of itself. But the work ahead is actually still a long ways to go. So we have to measure our progress in, in lips and bounds here. But we are making progress. It is being understood as a very important topic. It is guiding investments by governments and the development partners. And we are there to make sure that it's not just one-off investments, but investments that are sustainable and that communities can own once that has come into their ways. So this a lot of work ahead, but some progress has been made as well. What are the key pointers that we're going to be looking at at this conference? I know about the issues of the cost of broadband. Yes. What other ones are we looking at? We're going to be looking at how various factors combine to either keep women offline or get them online. So we will be looking also at the role of education, for instance, and how digital skills are acquired. We're going to be looking at the idea of rights. Do women feel they have the right to get online? If technology is being framed as, you know, a boys club, if a small girl is being given a doll and a boy is being given an iPad. What does that do when they're all in high school? What does that do when they're all in university? We'll be looking at all those things to show um, all the different actors who are working on this issue that it's not just affordable access. That's one thing. Once people have access, will they also be able to afford to get online? So in income inequality comes in. Uh, once they're also content in relevant languages, um, and we must we wait for somebody to create the content or we are able to create it ourselves? We'll be running a lot of workshops on how to create content on Wikipedia, for example. Um, I, the conference is here to happen, so we, we just cannot take the wind off your sail. But in terms of strategy, what do you think would be the best you know, uh, approach that many African economies could adapt to ensure that inclusivity is achieved? Um, it's actually a lot easier than it appears. Uh, the first thing that countries have to do is be very conscious and recognize that their policy needs to be gender responsive. You can and on that note, we wrap up this afternoon's edition of the Market Place. Many thanks for watching. My name is Emmanuel Abba TV. Have a good afternoon.